This video is about correlation. This is a statistical technique to help show if attributes are linearly dependent on one another. Many data exploration and mining activities suffer from having too many attributes and therefore they run slowly. And correlation between attributes can be a way to identify and eliminate those that depend on one another under the assumption that these are redundant and do not bring any additional information to the data. With this assumption their elimination should not affect accuracy of the modelling process and will speed processing up in general. In the real world, of course, this is rarely true. So the balance that must be struck is to estimate performance as correlated attributes are removed. Now this video uses the correlation matrix operator to calculate correlations and this operator also produces weights that you can use to select attributes. Now to use these weights effectively it's extremely important to understand the details to avoid removing the wrong ones which could lead to disappointment. So what we'll do is we'll look at some data which I've made specially to show up the correlation. Then we'll look at the correlation matrix output and what it produces. There are some parameters to the correlation matrix operator and the important one is correlation versus squared correlation. Then we'll look at the weights and we'll do a worked example to see how the weights get produced and then we might as well use them so we'll select attributes using them and observe the effect on model accuracy as we select them. Okay, so data first. The data I'm using here is the sonar data set which is in the samples and I'm adding some additional attributes to it. Basically, I'm adding three attributes. One's called a copy of attribute 2, which, strangely enough, is just attribute 2. I'm adding some random noise using the rand function. I'm also adding another attribute based on the sum of 2 and 4, uh, plus some random noise as well. So if I set a breakpoint here, let's look at the data. So the sonar data set has 60 attributes. I've added three, 208 examples. If we look at the statistics view, you can see there are my three new attributes here. There's a label, and then the remaining 60 is which is as supplied. Not much you can really see from the data here. So let's go straight to the output from the correlation matrix operator. This has two parameters basically squared correlation and normalized weights. We'll look at squared correlation first. So first we'll set the squared correlation to true and we will run and set a breakpoint just after the correlation matrix operator. Now it produces a thing called a correlation matrix here and basically what it does is every attribute is examined in turn and the correlation between it and all the others is calculated, including itself. So, as you might imagine, the correlation between an attribute and itself is 1. And that's what explains this diagonal here. So, generally, this is the Pearson correlation, which is what's used inside the operator. Basically, if it's set to 1, it means that the attributes are completely aligned, which is obvious for the an attribute with itself. Uh, if it's zero, then the attribute is not correlated at all. And so we can see here the attribute one and two, they are, they're not one, but there they are. There's a certain amount of correlation going on here, similarly. For these attributes here, you can observe. If we scroll over to the right, you can see this is the full correlation matrix, and you can see my attributes are here, so you can see attribute copy of attribute 2. Strange enough it, it correlates with attribute 2 which is the second row. Not surprising. Okay. Now this view is okay but it's uh, there's another view you can look at here. This is the pairwise table which I guess you could copy into some sort of spreadsheet if you wanted. This gives you each pair. It excludes the pairings with themselves. Um, the I like to look at the charts view. So what I'm doing here, this is a um, block plot and I'm plotting the first attribute on the x-axis, the second attribute on the y-axis and the correlation is the colour. Now red is 1 and blue is 0 so this is the range that you get of the correlation when you set squared correlation to true 
and you can see that basically everything on the diagonal is set to 1. It's an interesting feature that for some reason this one doesn't show up, I don't know why that is. And um, there seems to be some structure in the data that neighbours, neighbouring attributes, correlate more closely. So for example attribute 17 correlates with, it looks like, 18. Yeah, 18 and 17 correlate at 0.86 roughly. And you see here the attributes I've created at the top here. So copy of attribute 2, sure enough it correlates perfectly with number 2. The random attribute, which is this, the label doesn't show up, is here and it's basically blue. And I'm seeing that the combined 1, 2 and 4, because there's a random element it's not really correlating very well. But it seems to pick out um, a correlation with with the low numbered attributes here, this is this effect where neighbours correlate with one another. Anyway, so you look at this data as a domain expert of the Sonar data set and no doubt you can use that, use the uh, information here to work out what's going on. Now if we repeat the, the run, but this time setting squared correlation to false, I'm running it again now. Now this time the correlation matrix has negative values in them. Here you can see them here. And this in this situation, the correlation ranges between negative 1 and plus 1. So in this, in negative 1 in this case means that the attributes are not correlated at all. They're anti-correlated. 0 still means no correlation, and 1 means correlation. So if we now plot the charts view, now the range is between, well, it's minus 0.532, which is the minimum. The minus is just hiding behind that N there. And again, it ranges up to 1. And you can see the diagonal is, as usual, 1. And this time, the blue areas show attributes that don't co that anti-correlate with other attributes. So for some reason, these, these ones here, sort of 27 to 37, perhaps, they anti-correlate with 14 to 21. Now, by the squared correlation, turn, turns those negatives into positives. So... You just have to be extremely aware that by squaring the correlation, you're losing a certain amount of information, potentially. Okay, so that's the output, the correlation output from the correlation matrix operator. Now we're going to look at weight. So I'm going to start with the squared correlation example and run that again. And we'll, we're, we're going to look at weights. Now, I, I normally set normalised weights to true. This basically puts the weights in the range 0 to 1. If I set that to false, it doesn't change the order of the weights, but the numbers tend to be, um, in general, not between 0 and 1. I pers it's personal preference. I tend to use normalised weights because it's just easier for me. And so I won't, I won't use anything other than normalised weights in this video. So anyway, let's run this and look at the weights that we get out. So here, here they are, and basically, this is it's not an example set, this is a weights I.O. object. But basically, the two columns, there's an attribute name and a weight. And you can see that the maximum weight has been set to 1, and the minimum has been set to 0. And we can see that the maximum weight corresponds to the attribute that I've called random noise and also combined 2 and 4, they seem to be scoring highly. Now, to understand where these weights come from, I have done a worked example with a spreadsheet, which I shall bring over here. OK, so the squared correlation. So the first thing I, what you do is you use the correlation matrix. And hopefully you can see here I've copied this correlation matrix into a spreadsheet. So these first entries, hopefully you can see they correspond. And the weights are calculated in the following way. Each attribute is considered in turn. And the correlations are summed. So you can see the sum of the correlations for attribute 1 is 5.95. The sum for attribute 2 is 7.22 and so on. So the next thing you do, having worked out the sum of the correlations, you can then work out the weight. And the way you do it is you subtract. Here's a quite a simple formula. So here's, here's a table showing the sum of those weights for each attribute here. 
and the weight is calculated by subtracting the sum that you are that you've calculated for the attribute from the maximum of all of the sums which is this formula here so this this is the maximum minus the current one and then you divide that by the range between the maximum and minimum and by that method you get one as the maximum weight for the correlation which is smallest so if we think about that for a moment what this is doing is it's weighting the attributes that are least correlated across the whole set of all attributes so in this situation what it's concluded is that the random noise attribute is not correlated at all with anything really it's obviously it's random so the consequence of that is that its weight is set to one in other words it's it's the most unique i suppose it's 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 bringing um, the least correlation and then now that can be slightly counterintuitive you might imagine that perhaps you'd really want the weight to be highest for the most correlated but anyway it's not that way so you just have to understand how that works now we can repeat this for the situation where correlation is not set to squared so if I do this non squared run it again now we see that the weights are different and our random noise drops down the table somewhat now to understand why that again we'll go back to the spreadsheet so this is the matrix that you get if I compare with this is the matrix that I've just simply copied into my spreadsheet here and you can see there are some negatives 0 0.06 which is somewhere there it is so those correspond to those there and then you just repeat the same thing really and you, you, you find a sum of the correlations and sure enough here they are and they range between minus 5.63 and plus 13.3 so what this means is that the sum of the correlations the minimum actually will correspond to the attribute that's most anti-correlated with the others so on that basis that gives it makes it a good candidate to be highly weighted going back here here's the here are the weights as calculated by the actual operator and you can see one one point nine four seven so I have calculated repeated the calculation here so you can see that just squaring the correlation or leaving it as unsquared can have a, an effect quite a profound effect on the attributes that are output from the operator itself that's quite important because now we can use the select by weights operator to only select those that we're interested in and then we can do some model building here which is what this is going to be so let's do that so what I'll do is I'll set square correlation again and I'm going to do select by weights and if you remember that you can use that to select the top n in this case top seven is what I've chosen so this will in this situation choose those attributes that are most uncorrelated with all the rest so if I set a breakpoint here we'll see that happening and sure enough it's just chosen these which were the highest weighted attributes and I then go on to actually deselect the attributes I added just I don't want to poison the experiment too much so this will just leave me the, the ones in the original sonar data set because I'm actually not that interested in the ones I did just because that's me and then I'm doing a cross validation here just to estimate the performance if I run that all the way to the end what we'll see is a performance and it's sort of 70% performance using this this uh, confusion matrix now let's contrast that let's change this to be non-squared correlation run it again now the accuracy has fallen away to well rubbish it's just it's not really predicting anything in this situation it shows if you recollect the attributes which were most negatively correlated and so it weighted those above all others 
and this has had a, you know, as you can see, it's just chosen those. As you can see, it's it's the performance in this particular case is is has fallen through the floor. It's not very good. So it's an important point to bear in mind that you have to understand how the correlation matrix is calculating these weights in order to use them effectively. For a, for the longest time, I used to assume it was the other way around, and I would use top k as the ones that I assumed they were the most correlated. Turns out that it's not that not that way at all. And once you know that, you can understand how it works. Okay, so let's just run one more time, and look at the nice matrix, which is the nice picture. And in this situation, it's showing the range of correlations which are from negative to positive so this is showing that there are the anti-correlated ones and you can and you know just to remind ourselves the ones that made it through in the select attributes here that's 23 24 25 to 29 so i reckon that these 23 to these ones here do seem to show up as being negatively correlated with with lots of other attributes so hence they've been selected in this situation Okay.